Hey everybody, Rachel Ray here. In every class for our very first cooking camp together, we're gonna cook together, not just us, but a lot of my friends. You guys are gonna learn so many great techniques. You're gonna have so much fun. And at the end, you get to eat and share with all the people you love. And you know what I love? Everything we're doing together is gonna benefit the Boys and Girls Club of America and a brand new scholarship project. So we're doing well for others while we're making great food and doing well for ourselves and the people that we love. Thank you to all of our sponsors for making this possible. Game on, let's turn up the heat. Welcome to Rachel Ray's Yummo Cooking Camp. I'm really, really happy to have our counselor with us today. Campers, show some spirit and help me give a huge welcome to one of the kindest chefs in the business, Manit Shohan. Manit, welcome. Oh, thank you so much. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for coming out on Sunday to spend some time with us. We want to get to the cook and, and really learn some great skills. So tell us, what are we doing today and what should we have in front of us at this point? Okay, so what we are going to be making is kebabs. We're going to be skewering them, and it's a really, really simple recipe. What you should have in front of you is some sour cream, and then whatever uh, protein that you have chosen. You can have shrimp, you can have chicken, you can have mushroom, food, and then some paprika, salt, pepper, ginger, garlic, right? We need all of these things to make the skewers and then vegetables. So we have uh, peppers, red pepper, green pepper, zucchini, squash, some lemon, onion, cilantro, mint. Um, yeah, that should be it. So the for the The sound dropped out just a little bit, Manit. I just want to confirm that you can hear me okay? Yes, I can. Yes, okay. I can. Yes, You're technology back. is definitely your friend or, or your enemy at times. <laughs> That's great. All right. So listen, I think campers have had a chance now to get all the ingredients they need. So why don't we go ahead and let's let the cooking begin. Okay, fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with making the marinade. But before we do that, let's go ahead and preheat the oven. We'll preheat the oven to 350, but when we are baking it, we will put it to the broil set setting. So let's go over to the oven. Right over here, I'm going to bake, and I am going to 350 so that the oven is warm, right? That's how we are going to get started. Now, uh, for the marinade. Now this is a really, really simple marinade. I like using sour cream because it gives it a little bit of the tartness and the creaminess that you get. Uh, and of course, I got all of these things shipped. <laughs> so that is such an awesome, awesome uh, way to get groceries home. It's so awesome. Okay, so let's get a bowl in front of you. Let's take the sour cream. If you have a measuring cup, we'll go ahead and take around one cup of sour cream. So right over here. Now I've been doing it for a few years, kids, so I'm going to be eyeballing this. Now to this, we are going to add some salt. Salt is going to be to taste. Now when you're making a marinade, just make sure that the marinade is slightly generous when it comes to the amount of salt that you are putting because whatever you're going to marinate in this is going to absorb the salt. Now we'll go ahead and add some pepper. A little or a lot really, really depends on you guys, whatever you like. I like it to be slightly peppery, so I'm being generous about it. It's to taste. Mani, we had a question from Kara in New Orleans wanting to know if she can substitute a Greek yogurt for the sour cream. Absolutely, Kara, you can uh, substitute Greek yogurt. You can also substitute cream cheese. Um, and if Ooh. you want to keep it vegan, you can get some cashew butter and that works very well also. Or coconut cream, 
Like there is so much that you can do. Now, one thing which I always say about recipes is, I can give you the basic recipe, but you need to go ahead and make it your own. You need to put your signature, put your favorite flavors in it, right? Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add smoked paprika. Smoked paprika is going to be around one teaspoon right over here. Now, smoked paprika is not very spicy. It is more smoky, so it has got a lovely smoke flavor to it. And then we're going to get some ginger and some garlic over here. Now, I am going to tell you guys a trick. I'm not sure if Jet told you that, but this trick is going to blow your mind. <laughs> the best way to go ahead and peel ginger is with a spoon. I mean, it is so simple, kids. You just take a spoon and start peeling the ginger. Isn't that awesome? So, so, so simple. Wow, that's a great trick. Isn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and peel that. Manit, there was a question. If somebody could not source their fresh garlic, uh, could you substitute a dry product? Absolutely. You can go ahead and put dry uh, garlic powder, or even if you get those, um, the garlic, chopped garlic in oil, that works very well too. Okay, so I have my ginger. Now I'm going to go ahead and roughly chop this. And then let's go ahead and peel the garlic. So I'm sure all of us, do we know how to peel garlic? We get the garlic, we press this, break it down, right? And get all of these pods right over here. And then the head right over here that you see, press that down and then peel the garlic. Oh, another nice trick there. See? Let's do some more, because there's never enough ginger and garlic. I love the flavor of ginger and garlic, especially fresh. It's amazing. Sean was asking um, what your favorite spice to cook with is. Oh my God, Sean, I am a spice fiend. <laughs> I love spices. Let me actually show you something in my kitchen. Here, in my kitchen, I have something which is my spice box. And these are the spices that I usually cook with. So I love exploring a lot of spices. But before you start cooking with spices, start with the basics and then see what you like. Now, turmeric, I love turmeric. Turmeric is amazing. You can not only put them in kebabs, but you can also go ahead and put it in desserts. You can make a drink out of it. Turmeric ice cream. Ooh, so good. Okay, so now I have ginger and garlic. Now what you guys can do is you can go ahead and chop this up or you can go ahead and get a mortar and a pestle if you have that and then crush it. So that's what I'm going to do. And I like crushing it because the juices are released which, are, which is going to add to the flavor. Oh my God. Guys, can you smell it? Can you smell the ginger and the garlic? Isn't it such an amazing smell? So whether you're pounding it like Manit is or you're chopping it on your board, you should be getting a great fragrance coming up into your nose and getting you excited and tantalizing you. And if you're chopping the ginger, this is how you should be chopping it, right? Keep it as small as possible. Now, very, very important when you are chopping, make sure that your knife is really, really away from your fingers all the time. So when you're chopping, make sure that your fingers are this way and you're chopping so that your fingers don't get in the way, okay? so. Safety first, right? That's what Randy said when we started. Safety is very important in the kitchen. Okay. 
Okay, kids, I hope the marinade is ready for you. Now I'm going to put this in this mixture and then we are going to mix this. Manit Harper just uh, called out to say he loves your earrings. He loves those watermelon earrings. Oh my God, Harper, I'm so glad that you recognize that these are watermelon. I mean, come on, it's summer, right? We need watermelon in our lives, be it earrings or be it, you know, the real stuff. Okay, now you can go ahead and taste the marinade. Mmm, so good. I'm going to add a little bit more salt. The salt is just perfect, but a little bit more salt will go a long way. Okay. So Manit, that was a great clue that you need to taste as you're going along, right? To really make sure that that flavor profile is where you want it. Absolutely. It is completely, it's all about building layers of flavors because that is what it's all about. So we are good over here. Now let's go ahead and start cutting everything. I am going to be putting some zucchini squash peppers and some onions as my vegetable component, right? So now let's start with the peppers. The best way to cut peppers is slice it like this and cut it in three pieces. So basically you're getting rectangular pieces like this. And the rest of the vegetables should be pretty much proportionate. Yeah, don't forget campers, we're gonna be skewering today as opposed to some of the stir fry techniques we've learned in the past. So your sizes are gonna be different. Your chops are much coarser. And that's what Manit just showed you. Yeah, okay. One thing keep in mind that if you are using bamboo skewers, as I had put in the recipe, it should be soaked overnight in water. And the reason why we do that is so that the skewers don't burn because burnt skewers really don't make the flavor as good. Okay, so let's go ahead. We have our pepper. Now we'll go ahead and cut some squash. Again, guys, your favorite vegetables, whatever you like, use those vegetables. And look at how colorful this looks. I mean, I love, I love cooking with color. All the summer vegetables look beautiful. It's been a great growing season. It has been, hasn't it? And it's so, I mean, uh, I make this uh, skewer kebab for my kids all the time and they love it. And I'm sure you guys are going to love it. And as Rachel said, you get to eat it after this. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, speaking of your Great. children, Ruth from Massachusetts wanted to know what your favorite food was when you were a child. Oh my God, Ruth, the reason I became a chef is because I loved eating. So I did not discriminate. I loved eating everything and anything. And if anything was different, I think that is something that I would, I would go ahead and gravitate towards a lot more. And we have so be adventurous eaters, be adventurous. Yeah, and you'll never know what you will discover along the way. You will find an ingredient, you will find a technique you love, and you can go ahead and make that your own. So I have all of these vegetables which are cut. I'm going to put this in a bowl. Put the peppers and the onions together. And then the squash over here, along with the zucchini. Now, shrimp, we can do shrimp, we can do chicken, we can do mushrooms, we can do tofu, right? If you're doing mushrooms, make sure that you wash the mushrooms and remove the stems. So you can very easily just go ahead and push the stem and it's going to come out. And this is what you're looking for. So the stem, remove it. You don't want the stems. They don't add too much to the entire dish. Okay, so let's do that. If you are uh, using shrimp, you really don't have to do much to the shrimp. If you're using chicken, cut it into small cubes, 
if you're doing tofu, you can cut it into small cubes. Okay. This is a wonderfully so right versatile recipe as far as the protein source goes. You can pretty much, like you said, just choose your favorite. Or just kind of, uh, just skip the protein. Just do the vegetables. Mm. It'll be an amazing side also, right? And the fun part about this is you can also go ahead and be doing it in the oven, but you can also make it on the saute pan. So, okay, now that I have all of these ready to go. Let's go ahead and marinate it, right? I have the marinade over here. I'll take a spoon of marinade. In it goes there. In it goes there. And then the shrimp, I'm going to go ahead and put in here. And let's go ahead and mix this. Now, I love to use my hands, right? And that's what I am going to do. But if you want to use the spoon, that's fine. Just look at this. Oh, God. Guys, can you smell it? This is so awesome. First, and the onions. Oh, my God. Delicious food makes me so happy. <laughs> Break the onions. And then over here. Oh, God. So good. It's always fun to get messy in the kitchen. Oh my God, that's the best part, isn't it? I love this. I mean, the best part about uh, this recipe is with the kids all the time. They love to skewer. What I have done is I have a baking tray over here, which I have lined with a parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper, go ahead and put some oil on it or you can put some foil, right? You can do that. So now let's go ahead and skewer. I have these bamboo skewers. I have these stainless steels also. So we, we'll go ahead and do both. So again, fun. Just make sure that it's attractive and fun as possible. So I'm starting with some onion. I'll do some pepper, green pepper, red pepper, a shrimp. Um, let's do a zucchini, whoops, do a zucchini, do a squash, do another shrimp. So I, I mean, are you guys having fun with this? Isn't this like so, so awesome? Manit, what's a good tip to make sure that campers don't get a tip of the skewer into their fingers? Do you have a technique there? So basically what I do is I use my fingers like this to go ahead and skewer this. So if you see my, my fingers, they act as a guide and mm. then the skewer goes right in between that. So I use my thumb like this and the fingers and it, it should go right in the middle of it, right? Gotcha. You've got okay. to be, guys, you've got to be careful. Skewers can be very, very sharp. Okay, then I'm going to do one with mushrooms. Oh, I love mushrooms. So good. So good. Some zucchini, some squash. And don't forget, campers, you don't have to follow exactly the order of Manit. Use your own creativity. Stack those skewers as you see fit. Remember, you're in the kitchen. You're the boss. You're the chef. It's your creation. And your creativity rules. Absolutely. That is so people that... Um, you have to own this recipe. There are no two skewers that look the same. That's the fun part about it. Okay, so I have one tray ready right over here. Now, if you're using the smaller skewers right over here or the wooden skewers, it's exactly the same process. Just go ahead and add not as many ingredients on it. So you can go ahead and just do a few right over here, but it's still just as impactful. Now this, we are going to be making a mint cilantro chutney with it, which is amazing. But if you don't want to do that, just go ahead and serve it on rice. You can just eat this by itself. Usually um, whenever I make it at home, nobody has the patience to wait for anything else to be cooked because they are so delicious. Everybody goes ahead and finishes it before the rice or anything else is ready. Manit, okay. I don't know what we're getting more of here. Questions or people loving your jewelry today? Oh my gosh, I feel like we are on a 
home shopping experience here. <laughs> Guys, none of that is for sale. Please, please, no, no more questions about where you can find that. But Abigail did ask a question about your skewer. She wants to know how much space you leave between the items on the skewer or do you just sandwich them together tightly? No, I do not. I pack it loosely. There is a little bit of space between the different ingredients that I am threading only because you need to give uh, these ingredients the space to be cooked from all around. Now, if you go ahead and just press it together, then there'll be some parts of let's say if I go ahead and press all of this like just together, then that would mean that these parts are not going to be cooked, right? So you need to give a little bit of space between them. That's a great question. That's an absolutely great question. That was a great question. And I know that it, uh, it's gonna be super helpful as they work through this recipe. So, so how many people this. are gonna be eating in your house today, Monique? It looks like you, uh, you might have family and friends. <laughs> Randy, I'm cooking for myself, okay? They can fit <laughs> in for them. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, it, it'll, be, it'll be all of us kids. We have some family visiting. So yes, it'll be, it'll be all of us who'll be having a merry party. But of uh. course, I'll get them to skewer all of this, right? <laughs> so now we have some skewers which are ready. We're going to head over to the oven and put it in. Manita, I had a oven. question for you about the oven that came up. In the recipe, it talks about broiling. Yes. But you noticed that you used preheated to 350. What's the difference and how's that cooking yeah. technique? So what we are going to do right now is that the oven is preheating at 350. When we take the kebabs to the oven, we'll go ahead and put it only to a broil setting. And by putting it to a broil setting, what you are doing is you are only offering heat from the top. And what happens is that because you're doing that, it gives it almost that charred effect, which traditionally, when you go to an Indian restaurant, you have a tandoor, which is a clay oven. It's a charcoal oven. So it kind of reminds you of those flavors that you're looking at. So we are going to be putting it on the broil setting. So now we'll head over there to the oven. Okay. Going to put this in the oven. Guys, the oven is hot, so please be very, very careful. And now I'm going to put it to custom broil and put it to the highest setting right over here, which is going to be around 500 and start. Now, when you are using the oven and when you are baking, a lot of it depends on your oven right so you have to keep an eye on what you are doing you just can't put it in and forget about it also how big you have gone ahead and cut your vegetables and your chicken so keep an eye on that um also by keeping it on a broil setting everything is a lot like especially chicken stays a lot more moist so that is a um a great way of cooking in the oven you can also do it on the grill and you can also do it on a saute pan. You can just go ahead, put a saute pan, put, heat some oil right over here. And I'm going to just get a skewer and throw the skewer on there. Not only is this and a highly versatile- And it can over here also. Yeah, highly versatile as far as how you can skewer your things, but also how you cook it. It's really, it's a universally accepted and adapted recipe. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm going to start taking things out for the chutney right now. Okay, and before you do that, or while you're doing that, we'll come back and we'll take a look at all the things that you did take out. We do have a special guest who wants to pop in and just share a, a nice message with everybody. It's Melba Wilson from Melba's in Harlem, New York. Campers, give a big welcome to Melba Wilson. It's Melba from Melba's restaurant in Harlem. I have so many wonderful memories of cooking with my grandmother, in particular, as a child. Every summer vacation, we would all get into the car and drive down to South Carolina, where my grandparents lived. I loved going down there because my grandparents had a wonderful farm. Pretty much everything that they ate, in terms of vegetables, they grew on their farm. So even before the phrase, farm to table was coined, my grandparents were already cooking farm to table. I would go in the kitchen 
when my grandmother got up early in the morning and she would tell me stories, wonderful stories of things that happened in her past. And the great thing is she was relaying history. She was sharing stories, which I in turn have shared with my son. But food, food was the conduit. Food was the bonder and food was the thing that brought us together. Every special event, wedding, anniversary, birthday, everything that happened in our family happened over food. Food is comforting, food is warm. But the beautiful thing is that food is community. There's nothing better than a great meal to bring people together. I started Melba's Restaurant in Harlem because I was born bread and buttered in Harlem. And I wanted to be an example to my community. I wanted to show kids in my community that anything that we want to do, we can do. Starts with a dream and then putting pen to paper, sitting down and talking to people in the industry that you love, as well as volunteering. And let's get to work. Let's make these things happen. I'm here to tell you that if I can, so can you. What a great, great message from a really, really lovely woman who has had great success. It's so true, uh, Manit, so many people that we've had here at Cooking Camp have talked about fulfilling dreams, about the importance of the kitchen with the family, feeding people you love. I love these themes and I know that you are one that agrees with that wholeheartedly. Absolutely, when they say that the heart of the house is the kitchen, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. It's, it's stories, it's memories. They revolve around the kitchen. And that was such a beautiful story of, uh, you know, Melba along with her uh, grandparents. It just, it took me back to my, my childhood. Yeah, I would imagine we could all sit for hours and talk about the great food memories and family stories. And that's what it's all about. But let's make another memory by making this next part of your dish. Awesome. So what we are going to do is we will go ahead and make a chutney. Now what a chutney is, is a salsa. What salsa is to Mexican food, chutney is to Indian food. So chutney is basically a condiment. It can be cooked, it can be raw. It's a blend of different spices. And it is basically, think of it as a flavorful ketchup a side to any dish which makes the dish, it gives the dish this amazing amount of depth of flavor. So this is a very simple, very fresh chutney. It is a mango, mint, and cilantro chutney. So right over here, I have some mint, I have cilantro, I have lime, um, I'll, I'll have lime juice, I have a little bit of ginger, salt, and some sugar. And of course, a mango, right? So let me tell you ahead and peel a mango. Now, a lot of people ask me what is the best way to peel a mango. With a mango, be careful because it can be very slippery. I take a small knife, this is a paring knife, and I go ahead and peel the mango first. Now, if you don't find fresh mango, you can use uh, frozen mango or mango pulp, uh, which you can get at the grocery store. But nowadays, you literally see mango mangoes in each and every grocery store I have walked into. And it's one of my favorite fruits. I grew up in India and I literally spent most of my summer holidays on a mango tree. I would be plucking mangoes from the tree and just eating it. Just amazing. So I've gone ahead and peeled it now. The mango has a broad side and a narrow side. So put it down on the broad side. Cut the narrow side and now what you've done is you've made an anchor for yourself. There is a big stone in the center of a mango right over here that you don't want to use. Guys, make, make, it a, make, it, make sure that you are checking your kebabs which are in the oven. Okay, let's go and see how our kebabs are looking. Aha! Can you see it? It's lovely. It's sizzling. <laughs> oh, and this also looks like it is 
ready to go. Okay, let's just go ahead and blend this. So I'm going and putting mangoes in the blender. Okay, cilantro. Now with cilantro, the stems, a lot of people cut away the stems. I actually love the stems because I think the stems give it a lot of flavor. So when mm. you're making chutneys or if you're making sauces, do not throw away the stems of cilantro because you're losing out on a lot of flavor. So I'm going to give this a quick rinse. And that also saves us a lot of work. It does. So cilantro goes in the blender. Mint on the other hand, if you go ahead and see these brown stems, take them out. Okay. This goes in. Now we'll go ahead and, okay. Now when you are trying to juice lime, go ahead and roll it with your hand. This way you're making sure that you are loosening all the juice which is in here and it'll be easier for you to squeeze it. And I'll tell you another trick of how to squeeze lime. Um, if you guys have tongs at home, right? Go ahead, take tongs, press this. These are things that I'm telling you. And of course, if you have a lime or a lemon squeezer, that helps the best. But if you don't, this, you, this works amazingly. Manit, what happens if a couple of seeds fall okay. in there? Will it just get chewed up by, uh, by the blender or do we have to fish those out? So, so that's why I like using lime instead of lemon because this doesn't have seeds. Um, if I do use lemon, which you can, I go ahead and squeeze it in a small bowl and then strain it and put it in. But let's, yeah, make sure seeds don't get in because that will make it very bitter and you don't want a bitter chutney. You want a tart, sweet, salty, fresh chutney. Okay, so this is all done. I'm going to put a little bit of ginger. If you want, you can put, this is the ginger that we had peeled earlier. If you want, you can put ginger. If not, you can skip it. So this goes in. Let's put some sugar. Some salt. Just this smell of mango, mint, Cilantro, lime is amazing. Now let's go ahead and blend this. Wow, look at that color. Just look at this. The chutney is ready. Now, what do we do? The most important thing, taste, 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 okay? Let's taste it. Let's see if there's enough salt, sugar. Oh my God, this makes me so happy. This chutney, you can go ahead and make a, a cucumber mint sandwich out of it. Bread, put some chutney, slices of cucumber. Oh, so good. Okay. So our chutney is ready. And we'll get our kebabs out and then we will plate it. As simple as that. Wow. Like really, it's, it's really simple. One thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of butter. I'm going to melt the butter and I'm going to brush it over the kebabs when they come out. So just a little bit of butter. Monique, uh, Joanna asked, uh, how long will the chutney keep for? Um, can you refrigerate it and use it a couple days? You, you can refrigerate the chutney and you can keep it for at least three to four days. More than that, uh, the cilantro and the mint start oxidizing and it starts be, uh, becoming this really dark green color and it loses its freshness. So I'm going to take this mm. to the microwave. That's good. And as you're doing that, I want to just uh, remind people, we're really super proud to have the Boys and Girls Clubs of America as a partner. And we want to give a special shout out 
the boys and girls clubs of the Austin area in Texas, they distributed 36,012 club on the go kits and they served over 300,000 meals and snacks and they are really making the world a better place. Thanks so much for the boys and girls club and a special recognition to you guys in the Austin area there in Texas. And as you can okay. see, campers, Manit is maneuvering around the kitchen back and forth from the sink to the counter, to the skillet, to the <laughs> oven, getting ready to plate this beautiful and surprisingly much more simple meal than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, so this is the charred effect that I was talking about. Okay, now the one thing, especially when you're doing vegetables, do not overcook the vegetables. You still want the vegetables to have a little bit of the crunch to it, to have a little bit of the flavor to it, because there's nothing more um, not happy than <laughs> overcooked vegetables, right? Okay, so now, now I'm going to go ahead and put some butter on it. This butter is going to add to the richness of the dish. <sighs> Come on, guys. I am sure that your kebabs are looking so much better, right? Now I'm going to add a little bit of salt. This is going to be the finishing salt. That's looking so good. And then good. let's go little, ahead and plate it. Little butter, a little salt. Now, if the grill is still out, you can go ahead and use the grill. Now, if you do have these skewers, these skewers are going to be hot. So please use a kitchen towel. Right over here. And then this was the one that we skewered um, and sauteed in a saute pan. And this is it. Wow. I mean, come on. And I love those really... colors. The way it came together, it looks yeah, like the perfect want, summer dish. You can put some cho I mean, chopped cilantro or toned cilantro on it. And uh, that is it. Wow, that is a superstar, beautifully presented dish that I know every camper can, uh, can accomplish and really impress your family, your friends, and even impress yourself. That's a great dish for all year long, but certainly for summer. And as Manit said, what an ideal dish to also use your grills for. Okay, so uh, Francis wants to know what your favorite dessert is. Oh my God, Francis, uh, anything sweet is absolutely amazing. But I've got to tell you, I am really, really partial to a simple vanilla ice cream, a really good vanilla ice cream with hot chocolate fudge with a lot of candied pecans on it. I mean, uh, my mouth is watering while I'm talking to you about that. It's my favorite. <laughs> and, and Ariel and Michael wanted to know what you would have added to those kebabs if you wanted to dial up the spice side of things to make it get a little bit more heat. So um, uh, Ariel and Michael, what I would have done is I would have probably added some garam masala, which is a blend of, uh, it's an Indian spice blend. It's a blend of different spices and uh, which is, you know, which is this right over here. And then I would have added red chili powder and turmeric. So these three would have really taken only by heat, but I also mean by other flavors like, uh, you know, sweet spice, like a cinnamon or a smoky sm a spice like cumin. Okay. And uh, Rhea is going to really test your memory here, Manit. She wants to know if you remember the very first dish that you cooked. Rhea, I do remember the very first uh, dish that I cooked. My parents had gone for a concert and I was at home alone and I made a dish which is called uh, palak paneer, uh, which is uh, spinach and Indian cottage cheese. 
Um, in hindsight, I don't think it was very great, but my parents were very, very gracious and said it was delicious. Well, that's what parents are for, continuing to build that confidence. So we have a question from <laughs> Ali in Brooklyn, and, and she's asking, is judging hard on Chopped, and what do you think is the most important lesson that competing chefs have to learn when they do compete? Ali, judging is very, very hard. I have competed very often, but I also have, um, I also judge. Judging is hard because you have to be very, very uh, precise about the feedback that you're giving because the people who are in front of you have put their heart and soul in that competition. So it is, it is hard. You've got to be very, um, very honest in your uh, feedback and it has to be only about the food. It cannot be about any stories around that person. And the one thing which I tell all the chefs is that these competitions are all about circumstances. It's about a kitchen that you don't know. It is about ingredients that you don't know. So even if you lose and you, uh, you do not win, keep it in mind that you had the strength to compete, which is very important. And also it does not tell you what a kind of chef you are. It's the circumstances around you. So you should not, if you're defeated, you shouldn't be uh, put down. You should just come back with more reinforcement and with more determination of winning whenever you compete again. Great, great words of advice. Jocelyn wants to know um, who your role model is. Each and every person that I meet, meet is my role model. Uh, because there is something that you learn from each and every person. So don't ever forget that. There might be somebody who teaches you um, the lesson of friendship. There'll be somebody who teaches you about perseverance. So um, I find role models everywhere, be it, uh, be it people who I've worked with, be it my teachers, be it my mentors, be it my kids, be it my sous chefs, be it my dishwashers. Everybody is somebody I look up to. That's, uh, that's nice. We have, we have a lot to learn from just about everybody we come in contact with. So that's lesson there is when you come in contact with people, be patient. You're meeting them for a reason and you walk away with something that will be worthwhile. Okay, Lydia wants to know if you can share with us what your biggest kitchen disaster was in your career so far and what you learned from it. Oh my God, I've got to tell you this. Okay, so I... Um... I studied to be a baking and pastry uh, student, okay, person. And I got into Pali, but I had made a wedding cake. And um, I went, uh, it, there was a table which was set right next to the dance floor. And I went, I set up the cake, I nicely decorated it. It was beautiful. It was six, um, you know, uh, tears, absolutely beautiful. And I turn and I'm walking away when I turn to see the cake for the last time. And somebody decided that that was not the place to keep the cake. So they decided to pick up the table with the cake on it and take it somewhere else. And while this is happening, I can still see it in slow motion. The cake falling down. Oh, no. What I learned from that mistake is that always have backup, right? And don't be, don't be phased out if there is a problem that comes your way, okay? Just get up, find a solution. There's always a solution to each and every problem. That's a great lesson also, Manit. And I, uh, this is a really nice uh, question here. Robbie from Miami, she wants to know how your restaurant staff is doing in light of all the challenges that we're all facing with COVID-19. And she's sending her best wishes to you and to everybody you work with. How, how are things on your side? Oh my God, Robbie, you are so sweet. It is a difficult time for all of us. I think all of us are trying to navigate the waters. But you know, the thing about this industry is that we are a family and uh, we have to come up with solutions and we have to be together. And that's exactly what we are doing. We're just staying together and we are making sure that we get through this together. It's a teamwork. So everybody comes up with solutions on how to, to move. Well, Manit, I, I tell you, uh, we're, we're at the end of an hour here, and I just want to give you another huge, huge thank you on behalf of all of the campers and Rachel Ray and the entire camp staff. I said it at the very beginning, and I stand by it at the end. 
You are one of the nicest people that I've met in this business. You also have mad kitchen skills. I love the passion that jumps through the screen or on stage when I've been with you. You are somebody who we all have something to learn from and we are so privileged to have had you spend your Sunday with several skewers in the kitchen and your sister-in-law on camera to help us learn this great recipe. A huge, huge thank you. And uh, we look forward to learning from you more in the future. Oh my God, Randy, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. And kids, keep cooking and have the excitement of learning something new every day. Wishing you all the best.